Hey you guys, what's going on? Today I want to talk about the next week in gaming here on the Meathead Nation. So this week we are finishing up our Days Gone playing. I did a couple videos on it, did a couple reviews on it. I went, I went ahead and finished the game completely. I enjoyed the overall gameplay. Good, bad, or indifferent. I thought it was a, a nice title. It gave me many hours of gameplay. So that game t seemed to, to work out pretty good. But it'll be finished up this week. What I want to talk about, though, is next week's game that's releasing on May 14th, which is Tuesday, and that is Rage 2. If you're not familiar with Rage, what Rage is, Rage, the original Rage, I believe came out at the end of 2011 from ID Software. That's a long time ago. And it was, uh, you know, what it looked like for the time was pretty advanced on the graphics and stuff. It was touted to be open world. I think it it met with mixed reviews, which is what a lot of games do. I played it. I, I thought it was pretty fun. But Rage 2 goes to a whole new level. So Bethesda went ahead and combined two studios to make this, which is ID Software and Avalanche Studios. So if you're not familiar who these companies are, ID Software, some of the games most notable games I think that they've developed. ID Software developed Quake, also Doom, and Wolfenstein. So Doom and Wolfenstein are two of my, you know, all-time favorites up there as far as fun, crazy gameplay. So you keep that in mind. Think about Doom. Think about Wolfenstein, how that gameplay plays out. Then you say, well, who's Avalanche Studios? Well, Aval some of their notable titles... Titles like Just Cause, The Hunter, and Hunter Primal. Uh, we've got Mad Max, right? And also Generation Zero, which they developed and published themselves from their studio. Those are some of the notable titles from Avalanche Studios. So Avalanche Studios is known for their open world aspect of game development. Really open. You think about Hunter and Hunter Primal. Think about Mad Max and Just Cause. Think about Just Cause, the explosions, the traveling around that open world, pretty wild, and combine that with ID Software's Wolfenstein and Doom effect. Put those two together and what you have is Rage 2. So Rage 2 takes place 30 years after Rage, the first game. That's that's the premise behind this. And the idea behind the Rage post-apocalyptic world is I think a giant asteroid hit Earth and you know what just destroyed it. In the first game, it really made everything desolate, kind of desert-like. Um, but you're gonna play as this the last ranger. These are guys or people who were put underground in these arcs, like in like a stasis for a hundred years. And I, I guess the idea that they were going to come out and be uh, militaristic or law enforcement or just try and really get things back in order, maybe to save civilization. But they also had some tech, some technology that could uh, regrow biomes. You know, the, the, the theory is and the idea behind the game development is now instead of just all desert, you're going to have some some colorful biomes, maybe a forest biome, you know, water, all this different stuff. So that variety will be interesting. But you're going to play as this, this lone survivor of the Ark. The Ark is this underground cryostasis or some sort of stasis chamber. And you're going to come back and fight all these crazy factions, right? So these different biomes now, and it seems that that humankind is starting to to kind of re regain a foothold after the, the post-apocalyptic asteroid disaster. So what that does is it develops all these factions, and now you have these factions in these different biomes, and you're going to go around and just wreak havoc. Again, re you know, keeping in mind where these two studios, the games that they've made coming together, it's possible that this could just be a super fun, crazy game. Now... For games like this, I'm going to tell you that when I reviewed Days Gone, in Days Gone, I look for a heavy storyline to drive a game like that. 
in a game like Rage 2, I don't necessarily look for a strong storyline. I mean, we can have a linear type storyline that tells about this guy who comes out and he's going to save the world, whatever it is. But really, I want to play games like this for all the crazy driving, all the crazy guns, the different abilities. See, they get injected with these this technology into their bloodstream, which gives them special abilities. And that's why people are after them because they have this technology. And being that you're one versus all these factions, it should be pretty crazy. But I'm not looking for a, a very heavy storyline in a game like this. The review on different games, it's not that it's more critical or less critical. What you're looking at is the type of game it is. The type of game it is. When you look at a, a Bioshock or a Fallout, you know, these are, are role-playing games. These are RPGs that are driven via story and then everything else that comes into it and how much they want to build in gunplay and factions and all this other stuff that's secondary but when you look at a game for me like rage 2 and other games like that you're not necessarily i'm not necessarily looking to be driven through this game via story i'm looking to get all crazy it's like i really enjoyed mad max mad max was a super fun game now Mad Max, though, was more along the lines of the original Rage, which was a very barren wasteland. I'm just trying to picture what the neon and the, the different biomes are going to look like in Rage 2. So Rage 2, I'm going to start covering next week. Not only will I, I play it, I'm going to stream it, and I'm going to review it for everybody. So, But I want to get some hours and hours into it before I review it. That's going to be my thing. You know, I did my first review after about five hours on Days Gone, and then I did a follow-up review after I got about 20, 30 hours into it. Honestly, I would have had even more opinions on it if I would have did a review at the end of the game. But that takes a long time to do, and at that point, I think, uh, you know, we're past the review stage. But I really want to get in, get a feel for the game, kind of give you an idea whether... This is a game that you, you should get, you should consider, or you should avoid, right? And I think that's important in this day and age. The last thing I want to talk about today before we head off is, you know, I, I look for new games through, like, Google search, right? New games 2018, new games for, or 2019, new games for May. You know, you look by month, you look by year. But I also look on Steam. You look on PlayStation. But now that we have this Epic Games launcher really trying to get on board and compete with Steam, what they've done is they've lowered the cost to the publishers to put their game exclusively on Epic. They don't charge them as much. So there, you see there's a few games going over there. And there's some games that I actually missed because I was searching on Steam for new releases and it released on Epic Games. So that's something I'm going to have to adjust and change to. I'm just wondering what your guys' opinions are on Epic Games doing this, on Epic Games trying to get into the Steam game. So to be fair, if I was a game developer or publisher and I worked for five years on a game and I put it out there and a let's say company A wants to charge me 30% to put my game here, or company B wants to charge me, say, 15% to put it on their launcher so I could buy it and play through their site. As a business proposition, I want to say my five years of hard work, you see what I'm getting at? I understand the business aspect of it. I do. What I don't like is maybe the reasons behind it. I think that if you're going to do this, you need to offer more than like a one day attempt at a launcher. This just a single little thumbnail saying buy this game or you own this game. I want to see a lot more and that lot more costs. And that's where some of these different percentages comes into play. A lot more people visit and hang out and, and work on a site like Steam 
than they do just a launcher. Now, this isn't new. Ubisoft has Uplay, EA has Origin, you know, all these other games, Bethesda, you know, they all have their own launchers, which is completely understandable. And if I'm a big publisher like Bethesda, if I'm a big publisher like Ubisoft, I would want that because you can interact with um, uh, their own store for specific items in game. Like you, I think you play is, is one of the best. Here's why, very simple. You can still buy the game on Steam, most games. You can launch it via Steam. It launches Uplay in the background and, and your Uplay credits and store and all that stuff is going on as you play. You can buy it through Uplay. You can launch it through Uplay, but it's still interactive. It's still interactive. All my Far Cry stuff, I can launch through Steam. But then I can easily open up the Uplay store and see what they gave me for free, what I've earned in game by getting achievements, all of this stuff, I think that they did it in a very unique, uh, very user-friendly, gamer, player-friendly. That's what I'm looking for. Look, these guys are making billions and billions of dollars, these companies. So we don't need to talk about, we don't need to argue, we don't need to get on board the hate train for these giant publishers. They're going to make their money one way or another. What we need to talk about is how these things affect us as gamers. And that's what's most important, right? That's what's most important. I think people lose sight of that. You know, the EA hate train has been going on for years. And instead of doing that, you know, either if you hate them so much, stop playing their games. Or let's try and make a difference here to where the impact and effect on us Jealousy will get you nowhere for the billions of dollars they're making. That's not what this is about. This is about us playing video games that we love. So I just wanted to get your guys' opinions on how you feel about all these different launchers popping up. Now, you may be a PlayStation player or an Xbox player only, and you're like, no, I'm not affected by this at all. I have my one store. I do it all here. And that's fine. There is a a strange thing with Xbox and the Windows platform too, you know, that there's some stuff going on there and it'd be interesting to see how that develops in the future because I play a couple of titles that are basically Xbox games, but I play them through the, the Microsoft Windows Store on my PC. So that, that's pretty cool. I think that's, that's a neat option. But let me know in the comments down below how you guys feel, if you even care about these things. For me, it's more of an inconvenience right now. It's more of an inconvenience that I have to go to all these different... It's like when, mine, when I was playing Minecraft and you had you wanted to play Feed the Beast or you wanted to play um, you know, one of these really crazy mod packs. Well, they started opening their own launchers and you had to go to their launcher, download their launcher, and launch via that. You know, It starts to get overwhelming. It's like, give me a break. Stop shoving your launchers down my throat and let me play the games that I want to play, right? So for me, it does affect me a little bit more out of inconvenience and a bit of frustration. But at the end of the day, the game comes out like um, me uh, Metro. Metro was one of the first games that I had to go over to the Epic Games launcher and play it there. But after that first day saying, wow, what a pain in the butt. I'm all set up on Steam. Now I got to go get set up on Epic Games. After that, it didn't matter. I made a desktop icon. I launched it through there. With Steam, I don't do that. I have my games library. I go in there. I can see a list of all my games. And it just seems to work a lot better. What are your thoughts on that? Let me know in the comments down below. You guys, if you guys enjoyed the video, consider rating it with a thumbs up. And if you're subscribed, make sure that you have the bell notification on so you get my videos. Then you can decide whether it's a video you want to watch or you don't want to watch. Don't let YouTube decide what you watch and what you don't watch. Make up your own minds. All right, you guys, I want to thank you guys for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'm looking forward to next week with the release of Rage 2.